Okay, welcome everyone to today's podcast. I'm really pleased to have been joined by Anthony. Would you like to say hello? Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Anthony, and I'm a grateful uh, recovered drug addict and a grateful member of uh, Cocaine Anonymous. Brilliant, brilliant. So, um, yeah, so we're here today to talk about the program, the steps, the fellowship of CA. Um, if you just happen to have landed on this video, we have recorded one on each of the preceding 10 steps. Um, and we've also recorded one on sponsorship. What is a sponsor? And one on an introduction to CA, the program, the fellowship and the steps. So this is the podcast on step 11, which says we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. So before we get into the step, um, I'd just like to invite Anthony to share in general terms about recovery, uh, what's on your heart, uh, the programme and the fellowship. So over to you. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah. Thanks for this invite, Paul, to do this podcast. It's an honor, always an honor and a pleasure to uh, kind of give back to what was freely given to me. Yeah. My name's Anthony. I'm a grateful recovered uh, addict. And, uh, you know, in a general way, you know, I crossed the line at a very early age. I was one of them kids. I was a bit unruly. I was a bit subversive. My upbringing was quite feral and boundaryless. You know, the dynamic changed in my family and my parents split up and, uh, you know, and, and I grew up on a council estate in London and, uh, you know, I was started exploring things, not knowing that I, you know, I didn't know that I was restless, irritable and discontent. And I suffered with a, a spiritual malady, but I crossed the line at a very early age with substances and lost the power of choice in, in a lot of areas, not just around substances, you know, gambling, you know, dishonesty, you know, a lot of areas. And, uh, and, you know, I was utterly powerless. Lack of power was my dilemma for a very long time. And I arrived in recovery 39 years later uh, after I'd crossed the line and lost the power of choice. Uh, so I was 49 when I actually came into recovery. So you can imagine what went with that. You know, there was heroin, there was crack, there was prescription drugs, you know, private doctors, national health doctors, prison doctors and alcohol. And uh, leading a very wayward life, uh, you know, due to uh, chaotic lifestyle and criminality. And, uh, you know, today I sit here on this podcast, uh, my sobriety dates are 25th of the 2nd, 2015. You know, as a result of taking action in this program with a man that was armed with the facts, as it talks about on page 18 of the big book, our other literature, and, uh, you know, continuing to do that and do, you know, practice these spiritual principles and do these suggested things and meet the three sides of the triangle to the best of my God-given ability on a daily basis. I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for sharing with us. Yeah, so, I mean, personally speaking, um, you know, the transformation, Anthony, that we've seen these rooms from living out of spoons and works and bags, you know, uh, whatever the poison was, uh, liquid, powder pill, potion, rock, to to being completely free with the, the problem solved uh, one day at a time as we maintain a fit spiritual condition. Um, it's quite a miracle, you know. You know, when, when I work, work with the Liz now, Anthony, I have to really think back to remember the despair of those days, the, the isolation, the, the poverty and the unemployability or the limited employability, uh, the limited availability for relationships. You know, um, when I look back, you know, which is step one for me is, is the most important inventory uh, in the steps. It, it's really, really important. Step one is an inventory, a real-time stock-taking of the consequences of active addiction it really is the foundation so if you've landed on this video uh and you know you think you think you can just just do the steps in any order that's not how we do it anyway we work the steps starting at step one you know the steps are worked whilst completely abstinent from all mood and mind altering substances with the guidance of a sponsor 
uh, which, as Anthony has said, is a person that's armed with the facts about addiction and recovery, has managed to stay clean for a while and has a substantial amount of knowledge around the 12 steps of recovery on the literature, Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, now, this literature I've got up on the screen is uh, our, our kind of like one of our other books of literature, I was going to say our second book of literature, The 12 Steps and the 12 Traditions. Now, both the big book, which is actually called Alcoholics Anonymous, and the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions are available completely free to read or to listen to at aa.org 24-7, aa.org. They're also about 13, 14 pounds delivered off eBay and Amazon. So for me, you know, uh, Anthony, step one is the absolute foundation. You know, I, I, I have a commitment to abstinence in God's power and grace, uh, you know, as a direct result of, of, of having worked a solid step one. And furthermore, not just having worked a solid step one, um, having a degree of serenity and sanity around step one. Um, so I'll come back in a minute, but but come come back in, Anthony, share, share with our listeners. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Uh, you know, step one is the pivotal step. I mean, step one, the rest of the 11 steps are suggested ideals. Step one is the only step that, that can be taken with that 100% admission. And then step one, you know, it tells us it's broken down into two parts. Uh, you know, it says we were powerless over cocaine and any other mind altering substance and that our lives have become unmanageable. So step one for me, you know, the first part of the first step was also fully conceding and then making the admission that was the surrender process then making the admission i was 100 percent powerless and hopeless and then you know accepting the other part of step one which was the unmanageability that was going on in my inward being you know being restless irritable and discontent you know uh, if you look at page 52 of the book it talks about the bedevilments you know, and it talks about, you know, bit, you know, look, you look at the character defects, resentment, fear, self pity, self justification, self importance, you know, pride, ego, fear, you know, being driven by a hundred forms of fear, self delusion, self seeking, and self pity, you know, the distorted ego and the distorted personality and the distorted character from that manifest that selfish and self centered nature. You know, and, and 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 when you know my first sponsor, he actually boxed me into a corner. I knew I, I had no other alternative than to work this program because I knew he said to me the time and place would come. You know, there might not be a cloud on the horizon. He said, if you don't work this program, he says you just got to look at. You know, you spoke about it. people, people living in spoons, people living in crepe pipes, people living on foil, people living out of bottles of cider, cans of lager that, you know, jails, institutions, dereliction or death or near death experiences where the active addiction, drug addiction take or alcoholism takes us to that pitiful, incomprehensible demoralization, you know, and and then, you know, I can't bring to my consciousness with sufficient force the suffering and the humiliation of even a week or a month ago. I'm always without defense against the first one. So the steps when you start working them from step one, you know, and working the rest of the 11 steps after step one and then continuing, you know, making the admission, submitting, you know, and 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 and, and making making the restitution in eight and nine. You know, once once you start, you know, one, two and three, the foundation is step one, you know, the bedrock that gets built on. Step two is the cornerstone. Step three is the keystone, the archway to freedom. It tells us that. And then, you know, four to nine, you know, I make a search and finish moral image myself in step four. Then I confess to myself, you know, God and another human being, the exact nature of my wrongs. And then, and then I confess, uh, and then I look at my character defects in six and seven, which is a con con continual thing. And then I get a list in step eight, you know, to make amends. And then I get out in step nine and I make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so and injure them or others. And I'm moving into the 10, 11 and 12, which is keeps me in the present, keeps me in the day. I continue to take personal inventory and I'm wrong, promptly admit it. 
you know, it's a spot check and there's certain things I've got to do, you know, so it's, it's clear cut direction there. All you've got to do for any newcomers or anybody back from relapse or anybody who might be drifting, you just get someone who's armed with the facts to take you through this stuff to guide you, you know, give you direction, suggestion and guidance. And then step 11, you know, we sort through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge, as we understood him, praying only for the knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out. You know, and I've worked the first 11 steps and then I'm coming to the 12th step. So I must work the first 11 steps before I get to the 12th step, you know, and, and that's been my experience, you know, and, 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 I, and I know that the steps are kind of like a clock. Or I've got to put application into them. You know, I've got to do what needs to be done, adhere into these spiritual principles behind the steps as well, you know, and as long as, you know, I've seen people who come in broke, just like myself, you know, broken, you know, and, and, and then starting to that seed, the time and the harvest, you know, the, it's, it's called the metamorphosis process, the paradigm shift, the spiritual awakening, the spiritual experiences, and, and, and then adhering to what's got to be done. You know, so today I've got a primary purpose, and that is to carry this message to the newcomer or to the still suffering addict in and out of the room to let them know that there is a way out. There is a solution. There is a solution. I'll leave it there. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, um, just to let our listeners know, please feel free to replay this or to rewind this, um, you know, to share this video. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And we'll try and answer them. At the end of this video, we'll put up our, a meetings list of Zoom meetings that run every day. Um, there's lots of them. There's hundreds. So, you know, stick around or indeed fast forward to the end of, of this video and you'll see a meetings list and um, where you can come and hear Anthony and myself and, and hundreds of other people share their experience strength and hope you know and uh, a quick shout to fellowship before we move on to the actual step itself you know it, it's the power of identification for me Anthony um, you know, I mean, temperance societies have been around for hundreds of years. You know, the, the idea that we can proliferate the knowledge of sobriety and abstinence and encourage uh, persons to become abstinent, stay abstinent. However, it has to be said that CAA and NA is the most successful recovery program the planet's ever seen. I mean, it's exponential. We're talking over 16 million folks that have found long-term sobriety through 12-step recovery in its various forms. And not only sobriety from substance abuse, uh, they've found life from overeating. You know, I knew, I knew a chap that got clean from drugs, Anthony, but he, he was 26 stone. If you're listening to this over, over in America, uh, that's, uh, that's what's that? It's like over 500 pounds anyway. Um, no, it's not. Wait a minute. 10, 20, 280. It was about 370 pounds or something anyway. Uh, and he was only five foot five, you know, but he was, he was a giant of a man. Now he would, would be dead today were it not for getting clear of overeating. And he used these 12 steps to get clear of it. I've had other friends that have been clean and they'd become gambling addicts. And gambling was, well, had in some cases ruined their marriage and their jobs and their mind and their sanity, but they were still clean and they used these 12 steps. So, so you know, but when it comes to substance abuse, they reckon well over 15 million folks. And it's the power of identification in the positive and the negative, I think, Anthony, in respect of we identify uh, in with active addiction, how we used to use the feelings around using uh, the circumstances and the consequences. There's so much identification in 12-step rooms that you just can't get anywhere else. And, uh, and then there's a positive identification of recovery, of abstinence, of staying clean and sober in the face of all kinds of life circumstances. Uh, you know, sorrow, ill health, poverty, losing jobs, getting jobs, losing relationships, getting relationships, all the stuff we go through in life, all the trials of life can be gone through clean and sober. So, you know, the power of the fellowship and making the fellowship work for you is just as important as making the program work for you. It's a program of action and it can be a fellowship of action uh, and it's really powerful when we have a support network and we work the fellowship. So without further ado, let's come to step 11. Now I have to say, this is one of my favorite steps, Anthony. <laughs> Let me make that clear at this point. 
you know, it's such a beautiful step. And for our listeners, you know, particularly in case there's anyone that's new to CA, you know, come along to a meeting and hear these messages daily and be encouraged and emboldened so you too can have the desire to quit. Everyone's welcome. The only requirement of membership in CA is a desire to get clean, uh, you know. So everyone's welcome. And, um, you know, we worked the previous 10 steps uh, with a view uh, to getting into step 11. So what, what what's your thoughts on, on step 11, Anthony? Yeah, well, Paul, uh, my thoughts around step 11 is that, you know, going through the refinement process of the steps, we hurt, we heal and we help. So in step three, I handed my will and my life over to the care of God, as I understand it. And, you know, I do that on a daily basis. But in steps 11, it says, you know, it, uh, it says we sort of prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for the knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out. You know, so we sort through prayer and meditation. So how do I sort? You know, I pray, I get still and I meditate and I ponder on, you know, the God that I understand in and I meditate on the God that I understand in and, and I'm praying for the knowledge of his will. How best can I serve thee, thy will, not mine be done? Now, you can't put... Uh, you can't put uh, a measure a monopoly on step 11 because there's various uh faiths uh people believe spiritual faiths and spiritual denominations in the fellowship uh so you know it, it's uh I, I know the god that i believe in and uh and that's the god of the bible for me uh, but what everybody anybody else wants to believe in i respect that you know uh, i might not believe it but i do respect it you know, and, and, you know, you've got people coming in who might be atheists, who might be agnostic, might be believers, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and basically you were just talking about the power of unity, you know, the, the spirit of the fellowship, as well as work in the program, there is also power in unity, you know, because the ego, the pride, this is about humility. Step 11, it's about going to the power and realizing that your sobriety, because it's the power that enables me and empowers me to do what I do. So even when I work with others, I get up in the morning, I do what I do, I practice what I do in my step 11. Even when I work with others, I pray, you know, before we do anything, I pray before I share, you know, uh, I lay aside, set aside, and I try to invite the spirit of truth in to, to, to just use me as a vessel you know, and it tells me in step 11 in this 12 and 12, it's the father that doeth the work from within. Because fundamentally, God is in every man, woman and child, but it's been blocked with calamity, pomp, you know, debauchery. And, and then we come in and this is where the cleaning house process comes in. You know, and, uh, and by the time you get to this step, you've worked the first 10 steps. You know, and, and and then it's, you know, there's a direct linkage among, I'm, I'm going to read from page 98. Uh, it says there's a direct linkage among self-examination, meditation and prayer. So that's the combination. You know, there is a direct linkage among self-examination, meditation and prayer. Taken separately, these practices can bring much relief and benefit. But when they are logically related and interwoven, the results is an unshakable foundation for life. Now and then we may be granted a glimpse of that ultimate reality, which is God's kingdom. And we will be uh, comforted and assured that our own dynasty in that realm will be secure for so long as we try, however faultingly, to find and do the will of our own creator. You know, because it tells us that in this literature that we're made in the likeness and the image of God, which is spirit. You know, and we're made up of a spirit, a body and a soul. What's the soul? It's the mind, the will and the emotion. So it says, as we have seen, self-searching is the means by which we bring new vision, action and grace to bear upon the dark and negative side of our natures. You know, that dark, that dark side of our natures is, uh, you know, sin, defects of character, liabilities, you know, flaws in our makeup, imperfections. You know, and, and then it says uh, it is a step in the development that the kind of humility that makes it possible for us 
to receive God's help. Because, you know, it's being humble by going to the power, by going to God, by going to the creator and asking for his help. Because I know this ain't about self-reliance or self-sufficiency. This is about God reliance, God's sufficiency. It's about, you know, being reliant and not defiant. You know, and, and, and you know, and, 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 and it tells us in the step three, you know, I can take my will back at times. And when I do that, that's when I put myself into a point of pain. And it says, yet it is only a step. We will want to go further. We will want the good that is in us all, even in the worst of us, to flower and grow. That's beautiful. Flower and grow. You know, it's about spiritual maturity because there's been an emotional deformity and, an, uh, you know, a, a, an emotional undevelopment happened when I first started using, you know, and uh, a, a, and now, you know, I, I'm working the steps. I've worked the first 10 steps. I've got to the 11th step. By now, my spirit, my channel should start opening, you know, and it says, but first of all, we shall want sunlight. Nothing much can grow in the dark. Meditation is our step. So prayer is about asking. And it says meditation is our step out into the sun. How then shall we meditate? The actual experience of meditation and prayer across the centuries is, of course, immense. The world's libraries and places of worship are a treasure trove for all seekers. Because ultimately, that's what I'm doing. I heard a guy say this. He said, he said, all alcoholics and drug addicts, whether they know it or whether they don't know it, are on a quest for God. And it says it is to be hoped that every AA who has a religious connection, which emphasizes meditation, will return the practice of that devotion as never before. But what yeah. about, you know, I'm just going to finish here. What about the rest of us who, less fortunate, don't even know how to begin? Well, this is this is this is where you need to get someone who's armed with the facts who can guide yeah. you i'll i'll leave it there and i'll hand it over to you paul that's okay that was epic thank you so much anthony and um yeah so step 11 prayer and meditation you know well i spent a long time seeking god through prayer and medication i was medicating my feelings uh medicating my feelings about others myself and life uh finances circumstances medication medication you know that's what i did um, medicated the wounds of life, Anthony. Today I don't do that. You could say I treat myself with with prayer and meditation, uh, reaching out, working with others, uh, good self care, um, doing the best I can, or at least doing the best that I think I'm doing the best I can, Anthony. <laughs> I try to do the best I can on a daily basis, um, and so that is the transformation, the bridge to normal living, the designed for living that works clear-cut direction uh you know there's lots of ingredients and, and i'm to build on that solution for for a solid foundation in recovery and abstinence because then when i do that if and when i do that then i'm reasonably content anthony and why the hell would i want to use or drink or drugs again and furthermore i encounter god's power the creator's power in this step and i then go back to step one and I try to maintain serenity and sanity around the realities of step one. You know, I've heard people say that, that if someone's got a solid step one, if they've truly worked step one, they'll never use again. Now, now I know in the rooms we hear lots of generalizations and comments, so I'm not suggesting that's absolute truth, but, but I understand the point they were making, Anthony, that, you know, if I truly acknowledge the consequences, financial, marital, emotional, industrial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mental and physical, then I, why the hell would I want to use and drink again, Anthony? You know, uh, and so, uh, you know, step 11 is a very, very important step. And, and of course, you know, I mean, uh, in the last year, I, I've, I've worked with persons from various persuasions, a Hindu, a JW, uh you know someone that just believes in the spirit of the universe someone else that believes in the lord jesus christ um someone else that believes in allah it, 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 i will work with anyone who wants this program you know what i mean uh, ultimately it's their journey through the 12 steps it's their opportunity to find liberation from the disease of addiction from the darkness of uh, of alcoholism uh from the foolishness of the addictive alcoholic reasoning you know, and their higher power is their higher power, as you astutely said. However, however, I don't lie to people, Anthony. 
you know. Uh, you know, most right-minded, sensible humans admit that there has to be a creator. That's been my experience anyway. You know, most right-minded people acknowledge there has to be a creator. The gulf is that men don't know who the creator is, where the creator is, and what difference the creator can make in their life. That's the issue. Uh, and, it, and so there's this mental block, and then they think it's something to do with with, with earthly religions, you see, and the creators above all things, you see, the creators far above all works of men. You know what I mean? The creators far, far above all, you know what I mean? So, you know, I tell people straight, you know, what you believe is up to you. But if you want to ask me, I will tell you what I believe. There's no problem, you know, and uh, it's about getting that ongoing uh, personal relationship with a higher power that's sufficient to liberate you from the addictive reasoning, the addictive mindset. And the other great thing about the 12 steps, Anthony, I think is the ultimate thing is to have a pure heart, a heart free of resentment, hatred, envy, greed, lust, violence, all that stuff, you know, a clean heart, you know, uh, a loving heart of gratitude. You know, if, if, if you, if you've got a clean heart and you're not resentful and fearful, it's unlikely you'll be harmful to yourself or others. I mean, I've heard it shared that addiction is a form of self-harm. Uh, and again, that's one of those comments that there is some truth to, I'm not suggesting it's absolute truth. Um, but I mean, you know, a spiritual solution is very much the antidote for living on a chemical basis, you know, chemical addiction living on the spiritual basis. And, and of course, it's the step. Uh, there's only three other steps mentioned, power. Step one, we admitted we were powerless over addiction. Our lives have become unmanageable. Admit, or, or in Syria, we admitted we were powerless over cocaine and all the mind-altering substances. Uh, and our lives have become unmanageable. In step two, we came to leave that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity, sanity around addiction, right? And then in step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood God, uh, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. You know, and so in step 11 and today, um, I mean, the, you know, how do you pray? Uh, when do you pray? What do you pray about? You know, where, where is God? We, you know, I break down the step. When, I, when I'm working step 11, the wording, you know, we sought through prayer. Well, well, when do we seek and how do we seek? You know, an addict said to me a few weeks ago, you know, uh, when should I pray? And my response was, well, when should you not pray? You know, you tell me a good time not to pray and I'll tell you a good time to pray. <laughs> you know, prayer is the, is the greatest thing you can do for yourself, you know. Um, the more we pray, the happier we are and the more solution based we are. Um, so, so I think, you know, step 11 for me is very much one and one, um, you know, as in one and God, whereas step one was us on our own and today one in the disease of addiction in foolishness and all the consequences, all the powerlessness, all the unmanageability was one on one's own. One and one, 11 is one and God, or one and the creator, or one and your higher power. Uh, and that's where the difference is. Step 11 is a very important step, I would say. What, what do you think? Yeah, I like that. Uh, I totally agree with you. I mean, there's power in prayer. Prayer is not the least we can do. It's the most we can do. See, the ego wants to separate. And, you know, the, 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 the pride. But when we pray, it's about humility and ask God, you know, praying only for the knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out, then something miraculous happens. Because I've been in situations, you know, and it says it, you know, we will in, in the promises, it says we will intuitively even though to handle situations that used to baffle us. It says on page, I think it's 86, it talks about pray for uh, intuition, uh intuitiveness inspiration uh the right thoughts and actions and then it says pause when agitated or doubtful pray for the right thoughts and actions on, on the other previous page it says pray for the right thoughts and decisions this is in the big book but i'm just going to touch on this prayer here 
from the 12 and 12, what we're reading now. And I'm going to start with its author. It says its author was a man who for several hundred years now has been rated as a saint. We won't be biased or sacred, uh, scared off by the fact, because although he was not an alcoholic, he did, like us, go through the emotional ringer. You know, because if I'm trying to run on self-will, you know, and, and it tells me when I was in active addiction, you know, I, I, I anesthetized and medicated for 39 years, as you spoke about uh, accurately, about step one, I can't, I've got no power. You know, step two, you can, step three, I'm talking to the power here, and I'm going to let you. Not my will, I will be done. And it says, and as he came out the other side of that painful experience, because as you rightly said as well, you know, the, the addiction is not just alcohol, drugs, it's food, it's gambling, it's sex, it's codependency. It's, it, you know, it, it goes right through, the, you know, it goes right through, you know, there's sex and love addicts anonymous, sex addicts anonymous, you know, there's overeaters, there's, you know, there's a variety, there's nicotine anonymous, you know, and it says, as I, as he, and the only way I can overcome these problems, you know, once I've started going through the steps and I've worked the first 10 steps, you know, and I'll get to step 11, you know, I've, I've handed my will and my life over in step three, you know, on a daily basis, you know, I, I, I have to do a step seven, you know, and I pray. So in the morning, I have to get up, I have to pray, you know, I have to ponder and just get still, you know, and I'm praying only for the knowledge of God's will. And I'm trusting and have faith that no matter what, through the day, you know, I've done a to-do list and, and, and I've kind of got a bit of, bit of vision for my day and what I'm doing. And then and then I leave the rest to God, you know, and it says, as, as he came out the other side of that painful experience, this prayer was his expression of what he could then see, feel and wish to become. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love, that where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness, because this is about forgiveness as well. Also forgiving oneself as well, you know, because if you don't forgive, you're trying to put yourself above God. You've been forgiven. So who are you not to forgive? But you must. This is where we start developing a relationship with the power, a relationship with self and a relationship with others. And it says that's where uh, that where there is this school, I may bring harmony, that where there is error, I may bring truth, that where there is doubts, I may bring faith, that where there is despair, I may bring hope, that where there are shadows, I may bring light, and that where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, because this ain't all about me no more. By the time I get here to this step, you know, it really was never about me anyway, because this step tells me now that I'm being used as a vessel, you know, to help others. You know, I'm becoming transparent and transmissible, to help others, no matter how far down the scale I've gone, it tells me in the step nine promises, my experience is there to benefit others. Yeah. You know, and it says uh, to love than to be loved, for it is by self forgetting that one finds, and it is by forgiving that one is forgiven, and it is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen. As beginners in meditation, we might now regard this prayer several times very slowly, savoring every word and trying to take in the deep meaning of each phrase and idea. Now, you can get yep. this, you can get it online, you know, you can go on to YouTube, and you can get all the Step 11, you can get, you know, the Francis of CC prayer, you can get the George Keller that takes you through down to levels. There's the various types of... Uh, so, know, so, I mean, that, that's all great. Let me just come back in, at Anthony, because, uh, you know, we've only got about five, ten minutes left. So, I mean, you know, there's so much to say about Step 11 and you and me could literally talk all day long on Step 11. We really could, you know, and, and likely we will come back and do a part two uh, to Step 11. So please like and subscribe for future content. It, and when you do that, it, it means the videos are more visible on YouTube. Um, it, it's such a great step. And, you know, it's that improving conscious contact, Anthony. It's the sense of of a development and an improvement 
of the solution, which is which is conscious contact with the creator. Um, and you know, uh, praying for the, only for the knowledge of His will. What is the knowledge of His will? And a lot of this language is entirely new. So if you're listening to this, and spirituality, faith, steps, meetings is new to you, stick around, come to the meetings, you know, take part in recovery, listen to people that have got free and their experience of how they stayed free from drug addiction. Come along to the meetings, you know. Um, you know, it says, what is the knowledge of his will for us? Well, the knowledge, God's will for us in the round, Anthony, is that we're happy, healthy and whole. That's it. Happy, healthy, whole and harmless. That, that just about covers everything. Now, the specifics of God's will, should I marry this woman? Should I take this job? Should I move to this place? Well, that's a daily journey, details like that. But God's will is that we're happy, healthy, whole and harmless, period. Right. And then I need power to do all that. I, need, I then need power, you know. Uh, and, and that arguably is the purpose of the steps for us to get power. And of course, all power belongs to God. So there's no shortage of power and wisdom uh, with God. So, you know, um, it, it's such a wonderful, wonderful step. It really is. And, you know, there's many ways to pray, but the best way is really to just get into prayer and particularly in the morning, Anthony and I've shared it before. I have a friend with with over three decades of continuous sobriety. And he was in a really bad way with drinking drugs, you know. And he says this, he said he's made a lot of mistakes in recovery. But the one thing that he has managed to do every single morning, on every single day of them 30 odd years, is get up in the morning, get on his knees and say, God, I'm an alcoholic. Help me today to help others. Set me free from the bondage of self. You know, give me power today. And that's the one thing that he says has been a constant every single morning. And he attributes that, that asking and receiving, um, to be the reason for his sustained sobriety. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I know people of the same ilk, and I'm the same. You know, I know today. You know, I am of that hopeless variety. I was just a drunk. I was just a sinner saved by grace through faith. And I believe, as you said, I get down in the morning. How best can I serve thee? Thy will not mine be done. You know, and when I go and ask that, I've made plenty of mistakes myself in my recovery journey, you know, but I know this is about, you know, this is about doing these suggested things, you know, meeting the three sides of this triangle, you know, and, and enlarging on your spiritual life, you know, and working this program, getting some meetings, connecting with others, you know, and uh, more I know, the less I know, because more always gets revealed on a daily basis. See, you know, when I was using, you know, and I was thinking and scheming and where I was going to get my next hit, my next bit of crack or my next bit of coke or what doctor was I going to fly into, you know, whether it be a private doctor, a national health doctor or a prison doctor, or where was I going to get drink from, you know, today I go to the power. I go to God and ask him, what should I do? You know, because I believe today and I know today that everything I have is a gift from God in this program. Everything because otherwise i'll be stuck in active drug addiction you know putting needles in myself or trying to put needles in myself because towards the end of my use and i couldn't even get a hit you know and you know smoking crack you know letting drug dealers you know demoralize you know uh prescription drugs having to go to that chemist every day you know or or, or going back to the doctor and say, I've lost my script. All that rubbish, really. You know, or, or drinking and blackout and, you know, all that type of stuff. But today, when I wake up on awakening, I'm not restless, irritable and discontent. I go to the power. You know, like you just said, that spoke about that guy. And I know plenty of people like that and, you know, the same ilk who do that. Because this is a primary purpose that we've been given to help others. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it's a spiritual solution for chemical addiction. That's what's on offer. And, you know, we, we grow and we find joy and peace in a, in a personal spiritual journey. And, 
you know, to become established in, in personal spirituality, I think is really important. You know, I mean, I don't come along to 12 step meetings to, to learn about spirituality, Anthony. I'm well established in my personal spirituality, you know, by grace, you know, and I come along to meetings usually from a position of strength to hear a message about recovery from alcoholism, you know, and for any newcomers, alcoholism is addiction and addiction is alcoholism and, and sobriety is recovery and a drug is a drug, whether it's a liquid pill portion or a rock and alcohol is more certainly a drug, you know, and, and this is a program of complete abstinence from all mood and mind altering substances, except uh, things as prescribed from, from, a, from a doctor, of course. You know, we, we are completely abstinent. And, um, you know, I, I think it's such a such an important uh, step. And certainly when I'm working this step with folks, Anthony, I will spend several hours on this step looking at how do you understand God? You know, and again, whatever their conception of God is, I work with, you know, where where is God? You know, who is God? You know, how can God help you? You know, it, it says, as we understand God. So, so it's very important. How do you understand God? You know, so these are the kind of questions that, that I cover when I'm, when I'm working a step 11. Um, what, what do you think, Anthony? Yeah, I hardly agree. There is only one thing for a chemical problem, that's a spiritual solution. You know, a vital spiritual experience, because other than that, there's no solution. You can either go on to the bitter ends, blocking out the consciousness of your intolerable situations it talks about in our literature, or you can start looking for spiritual help. That's been, that was my experience as well. You know, and like you just said, I mean, going to meetings, my primary purpose when I go to meetings, now when I first came in, I went to the meetings to hear the solution. I wanted to hear that there was a solution and hear how other people had done it. You know, and then I, and I got a man that was armed with the facts. You know, they asked me to do 90 meetings in 90 days. This was in 2015. I had done about 209. I had to get anchored. And now with the Zoom, with the Zoom, you've got no excuse not to be able to get into meetings. You've got no excuse use to be able to not get a sponsor no matter where that sponsor is i've worked with people like you were speaking about earlier from all around the globe you know india holland america you know i've worked with people from the legal fraternity the medical fraternity you know i, I work with anyone whether they're from a you know 15 bedroom mansion a one bedroom flat council flat or a doorway you know they all suffer with the same thing like i do a threefold illness you know, which is which is physical, it's mental and it's spiritual. And the only way I can overcome, because in my own strength, I can't do that. So it's, it's your, in what you said about him, because, you know, step 10 is about continuity. You know, step 11 is about improving, you know, and, and, and step 12 is about practice. You know, it's just like Ronnie O'Sullivan when he was when they were all going home, he was on there practicing. Djokovic, when they were all going home, he was he was on there he was on he was on there practicing david beckham when they were all going home david beckham was there practicing his corners and his free kicks it's the same as this program we you know once once we get to this step we're going to the power you know we're working these principles you know and, and once we start doing that our life start changing because it says it says it there on page uh 100 and it starts, I'm starting on the second from bottom paragraph. It says, when such thoughts break in, we might recall a little ruefully how much store we used to set by imagination as it tried to create reality out of bottles. Yes, we reveled in that sort of thinking, didn't we? And no sober nowadays, don't we often try to do much the same thing? Perhaps our trouble was not that we used our imagination. Perhaps the real trouble was our almost total inability to point imagination towards the right objectives. So, you know, when we go through these steps objectively, we're trying to identify, you know, our liabilities, our assets and the harms we've caused. And then the main object of this program, of these steps, is to start getting a relationship with the power, you know, and that's what this step is all about. It says, look, it says, there's nothing the matter with constructive imagination. All sound achievements rest upon it. 
After all, no man can build a house until he first envisions a plan for it. Well, meditation is like that too. You know, so when I get still, I get into the spirit. You know, for me, I get into the, the word of my God, you know, and, and, and then, you know, it says it helps to envision our spiritual objectives before we try to move towards it. So let's get back to the sunlight, sunlit beach or to the plans or to the mountains, if you prefer, when by such simple devices, we have placed ourselves in a mood in which we can focus undisturbed on constructive imagination. Because, you know, prayer is about the asking and, and, and the meditation is about receiving, about believing and receiving, you know, and, and it says we might proceed like this. You know, so it says once more we read our prayer and again, try to see what its inner essence is. Well, think now about the man who first uttered that prayer, the prayer. First of all, he wanted to become a channel. Then he asked for the grace, because everything is by the grace. Everything I do today is by the grace to bring love, forgiveness, harmony, truth, faith, hope, light, and joy to every human being he could. You know, ultimately, this is this is, you know, this is what you know this step is about going. It says we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for the knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out. You know, uh, I'm going to leave it there because we might be doing a part two on this. So just, you know, subscribe, you know, on the YouTube channel, you know, play this back and listen to it, ponder on it, get some meetings, you know, get some literature if you're new, you know, and uh, your life will start revolutionising. Let me tell you, honestly, it really will. I'm going to leave it there for now. Absolutely. That's epic. Um, OK, family, we've pretty much come to the end of today's podcast. We will be doing a part two on step 11, so please like and subscribe on the screen now are some of the meetings that are available on Zoom. Zoom is a free app. Uh, don't ever feel you need to come on camera if you're attending a Zoom meeting. Probably less than a quarter of attendees have the camera on. Uh, and don't ever feel you need to talk. You're quite welcome to come along and just listen. You don't even have to speak at all. Conversely, if you'd like to share, we'd love to hear from you. Everyone is welcome. So here is... Here are a few of the meetings that are on. Um, I'm part of a group called We Can Recover that's on twice a day, every single day, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. UK time, in the purple pink boxes at the top. Um, there are lots and lots of meetings. Just the top left underneath is Pop Up Recovery. That's every morning at 10.30. It's a very good meeting. All you do is enter in that Zoom ID and that passcode. Uh, some of the meetings have passwords, some don't. We can recover doesn't pop up recovery does at the top right you'll see reaching out that's on every night of the week at 11 pm underneath that you'll see daily reprieve that's on every single day at 9 30. so there's lots and lots of meetings you're welcome at them all remember you can listen to or read the big book or the 12 and 12 completely free at aa.org so that brings us to the end of today's podcast. We'll be back with one on step 12 in a few days' time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. And Anthony, always a pleasure to hear your experience, strength and hope. That has just been phenomenal. Thank you so much for coming along today. Thank you for inviting me, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs>